Good morning and welcome to this morning's session of Executive Insights, The Art of Marketing to Women. I'm joined today, I'm Lacey Ewan, your host and the Digital Group Sales Director Digital um, at MediaCorp. I'm joined here today by some trailblazers in the industry and truly marketing heavyweights. Please welcome Xu Fen Go, founder of R3. Welcome Xu Fen. I think you're still on. Yeah. Thank you, Lacey, and good morning to everybody. Thanks for taking the time to attend this. Thank you for joining us. Also joining us today is Yojin Chung, the Global Senior Brand Director for SK2, one of the leading skincare brands in the world. She is also the founder of the SK2 Studio. Welcome, Yojin. Thanks, Lacey. Very happy to be here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to make sure everybody is aware you can ask questions throughout the session using the Q&A feature. Please feel free to do so. Um, your panellists will be able to ask, answer your questions as we go along later, and we'll have a Q&A session. Excuse me why we sort out a small te technical difficulty and we'll start. Okay, there we go. So the reason that we're gathered here today talking about the art of marketing to women, the reason we've gathered Chu Fen and Yo Jin on this exciting panel is to celebrate the launch of CNA Lifestyle Women. This panel today is powered by CNA Lifestyle Women, which is a new digital destination for all things women. Um, within the new section on the CNA Lifestyle site, we'll be discussing things such as financial literacy, climbing the corporate ladder, work-life balance, and a bunch of different social issues that the modern women is facing. So if you haven't checked out the new section on cnalifestyle.com, please go ahead and check it out. So before we proceed, we're going to do a quick poll um, just to understand, I know in the room we have a variety of different people from agencies, from SMEs, and we really want to understand what the current marketing methods you have been using to connect with the female demographics are. So I'm going to give us a quick minute to answer this poll. Um, please do participate. I think we'll give it another 20 seconds before we close the poll. Okay, we're closing the poll. Okay, interesting. So we can see that if we look at the results here, there's quite a few of you that are already doing content marketing, which was which is really nice to hear that this is a focus for targeting this female demographic. Yep. I know that having Xu Fen and Yojin on the call today, they'll be able to share a little bit more about how they're also utilizing content marketing um, among their clients and brands as well. Um, so interesting, good to hear. It's kind of an even, even result that we have there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so diving straight into the content and we'll get to the speakers portion first, because I know we all want to hear from Xu Fan and Yo Jim. 
Um, but one of the reasons that we wanted to structure this conversation today, and one of the reasons that it's important to have this conversation is we know that women empowerment is at the forefront of the national agenda in Singapore. There's been a national review of issues affecting women and the recommendations moving forward. So some of the insights that the government came out with was concerted efforts need to be made into towards gender equality and female empowerment and everyone, including men, need to play their part in uplifting women in society. So this is a, a big stat that even surprised me. This came from Nielsen. So women will own 75% of discretionary spend by 2028, making them the world's greatest influences. Uh, so it's clear from these kind of insights that this is an audience that can't be ignored, um, that we need to learn how to speak to them in effective ways. Uh, we also know that from the studies, this is also an audience that is very discerning about the brands they want to work with. Um, they'll be very loyal to a brand if it fits their needs, but they'll also be quick to dismiss a brand if it doesn't meet their needs and interests. Looking at the home front, we look at the purchasing power of women. So the average woman in Singapore will earn 61,000 a year. Um, and we know that they're willing to spend on premium brands and that they're looking for quality um, and, and exclusivity. So women hold crucial purchasing power as an audience. And now we'll dive into the different ways that we can actually engage with this audience. So a few of the opportunities for brands, and this is what I really want to get Shufan and Yoji to dig their teeth into in terms of helping marketers to answer these questions for us. Um, one of the things is the spotlight on pink tax. Um, and for those of you don't, that don't know, pink tax is basically when a brand will wrap it in pink colouring, different packaging to target women, but essentially it will be the same product. Um, so for women, we've all seen this with the likes of, you know, razors, um, shaving, foams and things like that where they're packaged in kind of pink packaging and they put a 20% increase in the price point on it. So how is this an opportunity for brands? Well, we can look at how brands can create products that empower women and break down these outdated sexist stereotypes. The second part that we wanna talk about is 89% of women have shared responsibility of the household. So obviously over time, this has evolved um, the needs of the modern women is very different to it was how it was previously. So then how can these brands address the everyday challenges that women face? Thirdly, how can we get back to women what they value most? Um, one of the studies from Nielsen shows that what women value most is time. Uh, we're all very short on time, all juggling many full sets and assets of our life. Um, how can brands enrich and simplify a modern woman's life? And lastly, how can we maximise efficiency while shopping? We're very used to e-commerce. We're very used to getting things that we want very quickly. So how can brands provide risk-free guarantees and convenience during the buying process? So it's at this point that I want to introduce Chu Fen Go, founder of R3, also mother of three. Um, to help answer some of these questions and, you know, what, what's your opinion on some of these things such as the pink tax? Do these ring true to you, Shufen? Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, first of all, I, I think I'm lucky in that I've always had the confidence, uh, you know, from young to speak out against stereotypes. But I think this is one of those obvious things that's got to go, that brands need to uh, realize that consumers these days are very savvy and there's, uh, with, you know, everything being available on the internet, the new generation of women, girls are much more educated. Uh, and, you know, whether, they, and, and I think all studies show that Gen Zs are incre incredibly value uh, conscious as well. So yeah. I think think tax got to go. Right, so I kind of agree on that, and you know, as um, uh, consumer myself, I, I guess this really resonate with me in terms of what I value most being time. Um, yeah. 
and and I guess I'll share a bit more about why that's the case for a lot of women like me. Yes, yeah, thank you, Shifan. I might just yeah introduce R three and what you do because um, yep. you're obviously very well versed in in marketing and advertising within the scene in Singapore. Right. Thank you, Lacey. Um, and so thanks everybody. Um, I think I find myself in a situation where, and you know, in my job where I hear a lot of clients talking about, we are talking about B2C marketing here versus B2B. And I often stand and say, look, as a consumer, I'm the founder of a business for the last coming to 19 years now. And I'm making decisions constantly as a human being, whether it's deciding, you know, uh, what to, whether the company should be migrating everything to a Google server or should we stay with, should we be with Microsoft, you know? You know, I'm deciding what price plan we should get as a, as a family with my husband for the home, for our Wi-Fi, for our mobile, right? So these are, I think some of the sectors are not speaking to me uh, or at least showing that I'm involved in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think like a lot of, a lot, I believe a lot of women out there, uh, working mothers and even homemakers, you know, we cherish time because, um, you know, we are a daughter, we are a wife, we are, you know, partner, we are parents, like in my case, my two dogs, and I apologize if you uh, hear them barking in the background, uh, something that is out of my control. The perils uh, of working from home, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they're equally excited about the webinar today. So I think a lot of what I'm sharing today is, as a consumer, as well as uh, an expert hired by a lot of the companies you see here to help them drive and change some of their approach to marketing uh, with their teams, as well as their agency, so that they get better return on every dollar spent with their agency, with the media that they are using, uh, and you know, with the approach they are taking towards, you know, for example, content marketing is very, very important for a lot of our clients. You know, what we bring to the table is really independent view of what's really best practice. You know, what are some of the external benchmarks that could be really useful to brands? Um, because we all, you know, Yojin would know beauty really well, right? As he should, you know, and a lot of our clients, you will know what your domain very well, but the consumer is judging you across categories. So just bear that in mind, right? Yeah. So I think there's a, there's a certain uh, privilege of seeing things uh, across uh, categories with diversity. I mean, and that's that's something I'd be really curious to, to hear more about she yeah. in terms of industries that perhaps are not obvious, you know, demographically targeting females, but how they're yeah. affecting that female yeah. demographic. So we like, at R3, we like to, you know, put things in perspective, right? And, uh, and we like to use data and research. So, you know, we... Um, undertook the first ever uh, study of how gender is portrayed in advertising in Singapore back in 2019. And we published a report on that in 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gives you a context on how, um, you know, where we are right now. And there's clearly uh, a gender gap uh, between what women are and how they are portrayed in advertising in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are kind of slow in portraying some of these things, right? Um, for example, women in leadership and decision-making positions outside the home care, right? Um, outside the obvious category, like you men alluded to earlier, needs to be portrayed much more frequently um, because you know, a lot of the ads are missing the multifaceted roles that women play. And, mm. and I think more than that, though, it's also the ambitions that are not acknowledged, right? Mm. Um, and we're beginning to see some diversity in how physical beauty is portrayed, mm. uh, but we are really at the early stage, right? I think some of the brands that had, you know, sort of uh, powered the way and paved the way were, I mean, the famous one is Dove. And that's mm. something that they've done very well globally. But I think more brands uh, in, in, who are, you know, got to stop preying on the insecurities and celebrate uh, diversity in a much uh, better way. Mm, I love that. And then I think the next slide, uh, Lacey, um, will give you some data points on, 
you know, that everyone uh, on this webinar should bear in mind. That Singapore specifically, we enjoy pretty high, you know, women participation in employment in jobs, right? And as you alluded to earlier, 69% of women actually earn the same or more than their partner or spouse. Now, this may not be, I think we, we had quite interesting reaction because clearly the fact is a, there's a gap between fact and perception, right? Um, and, you know, like, I think two in five women are holding executive roles in ASEAN. Um, I think we remain in Singapore quite poor, in my opinion, in terms of board level representation of women, uh, despite the fact that we've got 61% uh, women in, in the labor force, right? So I think that's a gap that needs to close. Um, from an advertising point of view, women spend a lot of time, you know, uh, consuming content. Um, and on social media. Uh, that's not a surprise, but I think the engagement level is also pretty high. So yeah. that's a great opportunity. Mm. I think in the, in the next, uh, we've got, we don't have time to show off the four cases that I've prepared, but I wanted to share one that I think is extremely uh, inspirational. Mm. Um, and we all know that in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, I think it was only in 2017 that women can legally drive. So there's no, so this is green field, right? For all automotive. And so Nissan did a campaign that uh, really showed they, that they understand what are some of the barriers. Um, and, and I think this is a really good example of how brand can bring consumer, like women into their brand and show how they can be part of the franchise. Mm. So without further ado, I think you should watch the film. Yeah, let's have a little look. <laughs> And I think the key point I want to understand uh, that brands need to get to is really investing the time to get under the skin and understand the insight. Right? The insight is here is clearly, you know, with this unprecedented change, the biggest barrier is not just the women that you're trying to sell to, it's actually the men. We've got to bring them along the journey. Yeah. And, you know, what, who better to give that confidence and that nod of approval than people dearest to you, whether it's a brother, your husband or your, your father, right? So I, yeah. I, I really like this uh, case uh, for that. The yeah, next touching. one, yeah. Um, and this is a surprising, um, and again, it challenged, uh, women has been sort of like 
you know, uh, challenging boundaries, but probably not enough stories told about this. So this is Mercedes Benz and I didn't know this until uh, we were doing research for this <laughs> webinar that the wife of the founder was so intimately involved uh, in the development of the, of the business, right? And in fact, you know, Bertha Benz was the first person in 1888 to drive the car over long distance, you know, testing the brake pads, inventing, in fact, inventing the brake pads, you know? So it's a really, I think it's an inspirational story about what she believes in is more than a car, but in herself, the self-belief. And yeah. I think many brands want to get and resonate. They want the, the consumers to resonate at very higher order purpose. And I think self-belief is really potent. So do take a look at this uh, video that will be shared. Yes, we'll um, send the link out afterwards. So you can watch. Yeah. And, and the next one, and this is Apple, right? Like we always expect something great from Apple and they've earned that right to be a bit more provocative. Um, and I'm glad that they've done so in the market that's really important to them and uh, probably the largest, most profitable in China. Uh, and not just, and, and nothing quite as uh, challenging as being a single mother in a rather traditional society. And so they've, you know, the, the hero of the film is a single mom, you know, and along and, and the story unfolds with all the different traditional roles that people still expect uh, women to play in the in the society that is mm. you know fast developing so again uh, check this out and um, that was all shot on an iphone that one wasn't it yes and all shot on an iphone so uh, a <laughs> point Lacey, because that's the product so integrated right always as always and i think that's one of the secret weapon uh, of great uh, stories is that link to brand has to yeah. be very central to the theme um, now closer to home, and this is a really recent ad that I really thought cut through a lot of the clutter of uh, Hari Raya, and this is a production for Singapore and Malaysia market. It's not a big spending brand, but it's a good example of how a traditional brand can still challenge uh, traditional stereotypes in mm. a very culturally acceptable and relevant way and in this case with humor so let's play this yeah sure it's a i'm sure we all have julie biscuits somewhere in our home <laughs> Seorang diri di pagi raja. Sedap. Oh, oh Director. Director, kalau anak saya tak boleh balik jumpa saya, kenapa saya tak boleh pergi jumpa orang? Nak pergi macam mana? Lah, tu apa? Itu kata prop. Tak boleh bergerak tau. Ha? Ini iklan raya tau, iklan raya. ya. Pasal crypto ke, pasal global warming ke, pasal mental health ke, pasal gender inequality ke. Tak ada ke? Kawin, kawin, kawin. Apa? Kita tak boleh ubah skrip. ya? Eh? Ini iklan raya tau. Iklan raya. Eh, ha. eh selain si dapur, watak saya ada lagi tak tempat lain? Ada. Ha. Lepas ni awak meninggal. Eh? eh? Huh? 
rendang crunchy. Eh, feeling, feel, feel, feel ya, feel. Ah, awak tengah nak masak resepi mak awak ni ya. Ha? Mak awak kan dah meninggal, ya. Skrip yang cakap. Ya, eh? skrip yang cakap. Yes, more, more. I want more, more, more. Ah, feeling. Okey, sekarang ni keluarkan air mata sebelah kiri. Sebelah kiri saja. Satu. Eh, jangan lap, jangan lap, jangan lap. Biar, biar. Yes, good, 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 good. good. Hmm. Hmm. Director, apa sah saya seorang sekedar masak? Mana ada beradik lain? Kita tak boleh ubah skrip ni. Ini iklan raya, tahu? Actually, tuan director, saya boleh masak tau. Boleh tak saya masuk dalam sini? <SILENCIO> Dari mana korang semua ni datang? Aku tak faham tu lah. <SILENCIO> Lovely. <laughs> that was that was really uh, it was really great the way they integrated the changing yes. types over generations. Yeah. yeah. So I guess how do we then? I, I want to just end with three tips on how we can close some of these gender gaps, right? Um, you know, like I mentioned throughout, give women the opportunity to see themselves as your customers, and I think there are certain categories that kind of like miss that is a bit of a blind spot. Uh, to be honest, because they haven't really reevaluate the roles that women are playing. Um, and I think importantly, really understand the ambitions and aspirations of the next generation. So they, they don't see gender the way we do. You know, like if you talk to a Gen Z, it's, you know, you will hear terms like fluidity or spectrum that you've never heard of uh, when I was growing up. Um, so again, do not assume like all good marketers, I think we need to seek the truth and you know nothing better than really investing in understanding you know your consumers better as well as looking beyond what you're doing and your brands to look for inspiration outside um, and I think lastly and very importantly um, engage the people on this journey like the people who are helping you create work your agency partner make sure they themselves have that increase their diversity quotient right mm -hmm. um and i think years ago when i started out as a young executive in the advertising agency i was really flawed by the fact that i had a team of creative people and all men um i was the only women and we were making a commercial for sanitary pads right and in fact on the client on the client side the same thing right everyone was actually male so <laughs> i hope things have changed a lot more but uh, the data still tells us that there's a lot to be done mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing like the power of the brand and the client to drive that change. And I think, in fact, I think P&G is doing a really good job. I'm not just saying that uh, but uh, because Yojin is here, but I'm aware of some of the initiatives and, and I think more companies need to do that, you know, to set targets for uh, diversity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shupan. Really appreciate you sharing those tips. That was, and, and just for everyone out there, if you have questions for Shupan, please pop them in the chat feature on the webinar. We will have a Q&A later and Shupan can answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you. So I think as a, a segue, we might just move into a, a quick poll um, to see how the content has been resonating. So which of the following of these messages do you think best resonate with the female customers you're trying to reach? I'll just give you 30 seconds to answer that question. We'll see who's been listening, Shupan. <laughs> Okay, we'll give it 10 seconds and we'll be closing the poll.
Okay. <laughs> Results. Which of the following messages do you think best resonate with the female customers you're trying to reach? Thirty-seven mm. percent of you said championing female empowerment. We had twenty-nine percent breaking gender stereotypes. Yeah. So also very good. Um, championing female empowerment leads me nicely into our next speaker, um, which I will introduce now. Yojin Chung, the senior digital brand director global for SK2, one of the leading skincare brands in the world, is joining us today. We're really happy to have you here, Yojin. Welcome. Thank you, Lacey. Good morning, everyone. Oh, what a beautiful ad, Shuf, and thanks for sharing those through. Beautiful storytelling, and I think it has a lot of consistency with uh, the stories that I'm about to share from the side from the brand, um, specifically SK2. Lacey, yeah, thank you, Lacey. Yes. Thanks, Yojin. So after hearing, obviously, what Chu Fen has shared, I'm very curious to hear from your perspective, what are the different ways we can market to women and how does this differ from marketing to the general population and men? Yeah, I think the start starting point is really knowing your audience, your target audience and spending time to understand them. And that's the only way to really find the best solution, right? You have to know your problem in a clear manner so that you can find how to tackle it. Mm. SK2 is a prestige skincare brand at PNG. Um, and this is actually my 13th year on the brand. And we have been talking to women across the world uh, and we see her as a whole. And I think that's very important and Shifin tapped on it too, not just as a skincare buyer for our case. Um, and actually being a human brand um, is, the core of PNG's legacy of brand building. In fact, in the mid 1900s, when PNG was the first company to put soap in soap opera, um, and you know that was a huge part of women's lives, um, entertaining them with topics that they were interested in. And marketing and brand building, also at SK2, it's really bringing that magic back, the magic of connecting with consumers on that one-on-one -on -one human level and uh, really becoming a human brand. Mm, I mentioned about course, human brand. That's, that's really nice, human brand, yeah. Right. So, I mean, as, as mentioned, we at SK2, we spend many hours uh, talking to these women, right? Across Singapore, Japan, which is our home market, China, Korea, and even in the US. And we could see that there is a, cons a consistent um, problem on the table for us which is the social pressures that drives especially a specific timeline for women to do things in her life. Mm -hmm. And this is what we call the boxes, uh, as you see on the screen. And, you know, it starts from going, getting into the right schools, you know, really studying hard. Um, and actually, you study hard and get into the right school. Let me start from the left and bottom corner and walk up there. Uh, be perfect. You have to look good. You work hard, you find the right spouse, you get the right property, you have, you know, have a kid, raise a child, that child has to study hard and, you know, get back to the school cycle again. And what's interesting is that these societal boxes had specific timelines. And because of that, it would dictate or it would actually take her off from the destiny that she wanted to pursue. And I'll talk a little bit more about that with specific case studies. And at the end, you know, we decided that we want to lend our voice to be the force for good and spark conversations so that we can take actions and we can inspire others to take actions that matter most to our audience. And this is our Change Destiny campaign. Thank you, Eugene. I can definitely identify with some of those boxes that we're put in as females um, and the timelines that, you know, we're pressured to do certain things by certain ages. But I think that's slowly changing and evolving for the, the next generations coming up. Um, I have a question. I mean, I'm, I'm keen to hear more about the Change Destiny campaign um, and what you've recently been doing with the elite Imp Olympic athletes. Um, but I'm just curious. So on the call, we have agencies, we have SMEs, we have clients. If you had to pick, say, three marketing rules for advertising to women, like just quick concise rules, what would they be? Sure. Um, I think first off is know your consumers and really be obsessed with her. Um, you know, 
today consumers and you know whether it's a Gen Z or you know even in the um, in the 20s to even 30s and beyond, our consumers will only build relationship with brand that they can identify and relate with. You know, and it starts from a common purpose that really resonates with her. And so really understanding what that is and how that, you know, overlaps with the beliefs that the brand has and identifying that and really standing by it. Um, you know, that's really knowing your consumer first is it's the first step to that. Mm. The second one I would say is to be authentic. Uh, authenticity, I think that is what matters the most these days, you know, yeah. um, so much media, so much content out there and people can discern very quickly what's authentic and what's not. And it's not about what brand's trying to sell, but what is it that human, as humans, what our consumers care about? What are the conversations that she wants to be involved in? And do you really care? Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, to just to give a bit of an example, whether it be our ambassadors from celebrities to athletes, when we you know, decide our partnership, which goes down the roads of decades for our case, um, it's really about do they share the com common belief with us? And that really takes us uh, a long way. And you know, it's also important that we'll be always very tempted on what's hot right now, what is that topical um, territories, but what's important is to stay grounded on your purpose. So mm -hmm. yes, it's true that female empowerment is something very, very topical and very rightfully so. And there's so much work we need to do in that territory. But when it comes to SK2 and Change Destiny, we've been on this journey for seven years mm -hmm. and to do it furthermore. And so I think that really goes back to, do you really believe in it? And are you gonna stand by it throughout the test of time? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked closely with yourself and the, the agency and, and you guys talk a lot about purpose-led marketing um, and how and why this has worked for SK2 across the globe. Um, do you want to just expand a little bit on, on purpose-led marketing? Sure, um, we can jump into that. Um, I think when it comes to um, Change Destiny, which is the platform we started seven years ago, mm -hmm. is that the, really the heart of the brand philosophy uh, this is our brand purpose and we really believe in it um you know we we've seen that these are this is a conversation uh from what consumers have been telling us as well you know from working women to um what we call young executives of course skin and beauty had been our trigger to talk to her uh back then but then what we realized were there were bigger issues there were bigger concerns uh, that was running through her mind and that goes back to what we share early on the box and what we call that uh, box insight. Mm. All those multiple societal pressures and expectations were very pronounced and it's getting even more acceler it's even more serious and severe uh, through the pandemic as well. So, mm. you know, and these are the days where businesses and brand should share their voice to um, drive the conversation the right way to give a platform for the dialogues to happen. And so Change Destiny is our global platform. And we actually say no to female empowerment. I know it's, it sounds very provocative, but at the end, women can empower themselves, right? Um, but it's really more of how do brands um, lend a voice in the right way? And it's, it, I think it's the social responsibility for all brands to really step up to really be that force for good and use our voice to inspire and support women to overcome these pressures placed on them, whether it be on skin and, and in life. Yeah, and, and for this Change Destiny campaign, do you have any case studies from SK2 and, and how they've performed that you can share with us? Yeah, so over the course of seven years, there were um, several, um, but let me just highlight a few. One of them was uh, what we've done in China, but it was a global campaign based on Chinese insight. Let's put it that way. It's Marriage Market Takeover. It was a film about real life issue of Chinese women uh, being pressured to get married before they turn 25. And there were labels called Sheng Nu or leftover women um, in China. And we tried to tell the story with real women who are going through that and um, you can see here, I mean, we've had some phenomenal results and this is 
or already five years back where the media platforms were a bit different from today. And, you know, 46 million, um, you know, 1.4 billion reach, 8 million social actions. Uh, we were able to uh, get a lot of external um, recognition on this. I think most importantly, what, had, what this had done for us is that consumers started to resonate with the brand as this brand understands me, this brand gets me, and it, we share the common value. So our journey continues since then. Um, and recently we've launched our SK2 studio. Um, this is the brand's first film studio uh, that dedicated to tackle social pressures impacting women today. And you know, we'll be doing this through the power of film and storytelling. Um, and you know, we have just released um, eight original films behind the SK2 studio. Mm. And the first film um, is what we call the, the center lane. And this is with swimmer Ike-san, uh, Ike Rikako. And it was directed by um, a world-renowned director, uh, Korea Dasan from Japan. Um, and it was, a, it's a, again, authentic real story of this swimmer who was in Japan um, uh, and who's been diagnosed with leukemia last year, but made her way back. And now, I mean, her pressure or her reality was even more severe I would say then the box insights that we have been talking about, but she also had to face a lot of beyond just the illness, um, different pressures that was um, thrown at her and how she you know, fought her way through was a, was a great inspiration personally. And I knew it was gonna resonate with the audience beyond and it really did. So this is what we released um, a few months back. Uh, from there on, we took on our conversation with uh, more athletes um, and what we call the VS series. Uh, and this one was with six athletes and teams. And it included, you know, Simone Biles, Liu Xiang, um, Ishikawa-san, the badminton duo from Japan, Mahina, the surfer, volleyball team. And they represent a societal pressure that they've been uh, going through. And we've, it's not an athlete story, it's a human story. And these women, have been championing their life and really pushing their you know, gains to beyond limits. And um, it has been beyond the views and likes that we've been get, get, getting, which is adding up to about 100 million right now. But beyond that, you know, what, what I see the value in it is the sparking the meaningful conversation. And the amount of the stories that we actually hear back from our viewers has been fascinating. And the pressures here we talk uh, that we cover again, go into the areas that are very relevant to all of us. Um, you know, for example, Simone Biles is about social trolling mm -hmm. or, you know, Ishikawa-san, the table tennis player, talks about the pressures uh, that's uh, put on her, both externally and internally, and how to strive for the perfection. And, you know, in, in different realms of the professions that we, we are in and our audiences are in, they can resonate and hopefully it sparks inspirations. So we recognize that this is a journey, you know, it's, um, we want to lend our voice to tackle some of the beauty stereotypes, societal stereotypes and pressures that are deeply rooted in our society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a combination of the work, of course, that we do over years, but also other brands and, and, and we welcome a lot of other brands actually joining this conversation because I don't think it's a, you know, one man or one brand, um, work that's gonna do the full change. So hopefully we can hold hands and really move that needle. It's, a, it's an inside job. It, it's great to see a brand such as SK2 kind of practicing what they preach in terms of, you know, product focus, not as product focus, focusing on the content marketing, the strategy and connecting with women. And also, you know, not just saying this, but seeing the results in terms of the engagement and the video views that you're getting um, for this particular campaign. I'm curious, this, this particular campaign, I've taken a look at some of the videos and we'll play a little teaser um, for the audience next. The anime style seems like a, you know, quite a different departure from SK2's traditional advertising. Was there some, you know, insights or audience insights that you, you guys collected that decided to, to make you go down this avenue with anime? Yeah, no, um, thanks for watching these videos, um, films. 
And no, absolutely. We were, so I think the starting point is um, SK2 and PNG is the official sponsor of the Olympic Games. And that's how we got into touch with the athletes and we wanted to tell their story. And as we talked and talked to them, um, the societal pressures, the internal pressures that they go through, some were very sensitive uh, and sometimes very difficult to capture. But we wanted to, you know, tell a real human authentic story by capturing them with some of the real life shoots, but also be able to combine that with borrowing the format of animation that could depict sometimes a uh, theoretical or, you know, um, less tangible concepts, bring them, bring them to life was easier using animation techniques. Mm. Shall we take a look? Sure, let's play the trailer. Amazing. Thank you for sharing, Yojin. Very honoured to have you on the panel today. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I'm sure the audience has a lot of questions for Yojin, so please do put them in the Q&A feature um, and we'll circle back to that shortly. Thank you very much, Yojin. So before we head into the Q&A feature, I just wanted to do a quick key takeaways wrap up of some of the insights that we were lucky enough to hear about from Xu Fen and Yeo Jin. Um, Xu Fen did mention, give women the opportunity to see themselves as your customer. Um, I think this was nicely demonstrated in the Saudi Arabia ad for Nissan. You know, obviously it, Nissan was not their typical, women were not their typical customer in Saudi Arabia, and they were very successful in being able to reach out to that audience separately. Um, the second of which is consider the ambitions and aspirations of the next generation, Xu Fen mentioned. I think this was Julie's ad with the Harry Raya. This was perfectly, perfectly executed. Um, you know, women coming up today that are young, that are millennials, they don't necessarily aspire to just join the patriarchy. You know, they have much, much larger dreams, but even if they do, that's fine too. Um, but it's not a box that we can fit them in, as Yojin mentioned in her piece as well. Um, the third of which was a, a key takeaway for me was serve, not sell. Um, as we've mentioned throughout, the average consumer is very, very sensitive to being sold to now. Um, they're not putting the product first, but putting the mission first. Um, speaking as a human brand, which Yojin mentioned earlier, speaking to a human person as a human brand, which I loved. Um, and I know for myself, the brands that I resonate most with are brands that connect with me on some emotional level. Yeah. Um, the easy one that we can all take away and implement, whether you're an SME or whether you're SK2 and you're creating films or long form content, is find the solution to the problem your audience is trying to solve. So it may be that you don't have the budget to create, you know, big long form content, um, but starting with the problem to the, the solution is key. And that's something that we can, you know, implement quite easily for most brands as a, a quick tip. Um, the next is connect with consumers on a one-to-one -one human level. We mentioned that obviously that's an important way to connect with the modern women and her needs. Um, and lastly, encourage your agency partners to increase their diversity quotient. Um, so this could be anywhere, Shifen, just from a basic level, this could be anything from A-B testing different images or stereotypes and audiences, rather than assuming, you know, a role of, of a woman in one ad, testing yeah. different creatives. Yeah. Yes. Which brings us into the Q&A session. Um, so we're just going to pick out a few questions for the panelists to answer. Okay, so I've got one here and this one's for you, Yojin. We said, how does all this engagement lead to business results? Great question. 
Um, I think top line is, yes, there will be short-term pressures well, as a business leader um, and, um, and there's always a temptation. I think though what we need to understand is, yes, if we're looking for a brand that's not gonna last for a long time, you know, maybe that's what the way to go, but we're looking for a brand building that's gonna last more than decades. And to do that, you really need to resonate with your audience. So to tell the truth on SK2, we have been driving this um, change destiny platform and conversations over the seven years. And over that course of time, our brand's been growing double digit year on year. And there is obviously a clear linkage at the end of the day. Now, you know, product has to work uh, and consumers have to see that too, but how to make a difference, how to differentiate your brand uh, proposition, how to be resonating with your consumer will have to go further more than just product. And I think that's where we made a choice that we're gonna go down the lane of purpose and that's what, uh, what we want to stand for. Um, and that's been, you know, working for us both um, making the emotional engagement as well as the functional benefit of the product. Thank you, Gojin. The next question I'm going to ask is for uh, Xu Fen. So Xu Fen, how can traditionally masculine brands, i.e. alcohol or even cars, turn to target and appeal women? I've seen many attempts, but none seem to work. What advice do you have? Well, I think try harder, <laughs> but you know, um, but I think before I get to uh, answering the how, I think clearly uh, if you look at why this is important, um, this is not just Singapore, but globally women are consuming more alcohol. Uh, that's not, and especially during this lockdown. Um, and yet, you know, if you look at the typical customer journey and customer profile that we still see brands talking about women doesn't really feature. Um, so I think there needs to be a very long-term commitment to the women segment and not a one-off campaign. Um, and on cars, again, especially in Singapore with the cost of cars being what it is, I think, you know, for, for longest time, car manufacturers and, you know, distributors are kind of deluded to think that women don't have a key role uh, to play in the decision-making process. So <clears throat> I think the problem can't be solved with just you know, how you portray women or giving them uh, a role to play in your advertising. You know, if the minute she walks into the showroom, the salesperson only talks to the husband. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think you need to put yourself in the shoes of the you know, consumer, the the, the decision-making process, truly understand the customer journey um, for something that is very high involvement, like the car category. So I think one of the, you know, and, and to be honest, I've been personally involved in the past with uh, some clients on campaigns that have done really well um, in converting women. So it's, uh, it's possible and it's very profitable, um, but I would say you need to go beyond you need to challenge your own marketing stereotypes uh, yeah. beyond communication, which is, you know, possibly an easier fix than the rest of the um, customer service, for example. That's an interesting point. So it goes back to even how you train your staff from the moment, you know, yeah. someone walks into the room. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so we, I think we've got time just for one more question. Um, apologies that we can't get to them all. Um, please feel free to, to email us afterwards if you're, you're desperate for an answer to your question. Um, we'll also have the webinar available um, via LinkedIn as well as a, a bridge version of the deck. And, and basically, we are very happy to answer whatever questions we can't do today. So like, I think you're going to be sharing. Um, you can contact me if you have other burning questions. <laughs> Thank you, Shufen. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to pose this question to, to both of you um, because I think it's a good a good one to wrap up on. Um, so I'll start with Yojin. Yojin, how do we market the right content to women? How do we decide on the market country, interest or culture? Uh, what was a long one? What would be the main focal point for planning content for women of various ages and various points through their life journey? 
Sure, I think it, there are many stories that we can tell. Uh, there are many um, areas that brands need to step up and you know share their voice on. But it goes back to who is your target audience, right? I mean, there, there are at least a diverse, not just demographically wide or culturally, but you know, there will be sub segments and you'll have to know who your target is and especially your design target is. For SK2, just as a reference, we welcome all genders, all age groups. And in fact, we, you know, even if there is life form outside of the earth, we want them to use Pitera, which is our core <laughs> iconic essence. But it goes back to who's your really design tag and who do you want to relate to? And as a beauty brand, we want to be relating to a certain age group uh, more on the younger side because, you know, no one wants to actually use a mother's or grandmother's brand when it comes to beauty. And, you know, that's, that's the conversation we want to be involved in. And I think what's really important is knowing how or what makes your brand unique, identifying your brand purpose and identity, you know, versus jumping onto a bandwagon of doing what everyone's doing, because that becomes sea of sameness and you won't be able to stand up uh, or stand against others as um, something memorable, something that they will consider when they make that next purchase choice. So mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And happy to answer any further questions after this as well. Yeah, that's great. That makes sense. Shufan, do you have anything to, to add on to that from what Yojin shared? Well, I, I think for all brands, you need to be authentic. You need to find something that you can authentically own, um, you know, in the minds of your consumer, mm -hmm. right? Um, and whether, and, and you've got that whole spectrum right, uh, of how you can engage with. So find something that nobody else, uh, one, you can really stand up to under scrutiny <laughs> because, yeah. you know, that's, that's the thing, right? Gen Zs and the millennials are a lot more savvy and they're very quick at calling you out. So, you know, if you're going to be, uh, you know, if you believe in cause advertising and you, you, you know, and you want to be purpose-led, I think that's all great and it's very important because that allows you to connect with your consumer at the deeper level. But I think you've got to be very authentic. And when I stress authenticity is not just in your communications, but really in your interactions, in how you solve that problem, you know, yeah. for, for your consumer better than anybody else. I think it's got to stand to that. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think, you know, obviously cause advertising has become huge lately. Um, yeah. and it's becoming so big that it's easy to see through when, you know, there's not genuine work being done. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, and especially with, you know, the birth of cancel culture, you will yeah. be called out. You will be called out if um, you're not backing up what you're preaching. Yes. Okay, so that actually brings us to the end of the session. I just want to thank everyone for joining us. Again, this session and this conversation was powered by CNA Lifestyle Women. We'll be having many more of these conversations, connected conversations, um, connecting our community on CNA Lifestyle Women. Um, it's been a pleasure. I'm so happy to have you on the panel, both Yo Jin Chung and Chu Fen. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you and congratulations to MediaCorp uh, for recognizing the importance of this segment. I'm really excited uh, that, you know, there's a destination for women, I guess, that is, you know, curated and relevant. Thank you, Lacey. Good to thank see you. Thank you. Thank you, Yojin. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, this webinar will be recorded and uploaded. So if you want to share it with some other people within your business or, you know, your agency teammates, you'll be able to do so. There'll be a bridge version of the deck available as well. And of course, as Yojun and Chufen mentioned, if there's any questions, you can email us and we'll be able to come back to you on that. Um, thank you, everyone, and have a, a good day. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye.